Hi, and welcome to Frazzlecast. Climb aboard the gnome train. Woo! Chugga, 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 woo! Please make sure to keep your limbs and experimental instruments inside the train at all times. And now, on with the show. A podcast by a Blizzard fan gnome about World of Warcraft and geeky stuff. I promise you, they do talk about the World of Warcraft. They just go off the rails sometimes. I'm Frasley, and I am joined by Sai of Scrubs vs. the World. Hello. And Pete of Stories Around Azeroth. Greetings and salutations, dear gnome. So, we have a packed show tonight. It was one of these I did not expect it to be this packed. <laughs> so, you know what? Epic and Sandy, before we get into the show, what time is it? It's time to go around the table. Great idea. So, what have you been up to recently? Well, first thing I did today was uh, give myself this beautiful do. I like it. It's out of control. It was quite the process. Apparently, I have some cow licks that just did not want to cooperate. So if I do go bald, I hope this spot goes first. I'm telling people that what I want to do is I want my videos, my streams and stuff to like represent like, I'll, I'll look back at my hair a year from now and be like, wow, I had fallout hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm Jumanji. I'm Robin Williams in Jumanji. Ah! <laughs> But did yeah. you have the beard to match? Oh, I need the outfit to match. Okay, I, I can get I can get like a loincloth and a uh, tiger no, the outfit. Beard. The beard. Oh, the beard. Okay, okay, yes, yes, the beard. I mean, because I I I think I can get tiger print stuff. Synthetic tiger print. I'm not going to be joking. Exotic. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I highly don't recommend that. No, I me mean, either. That guy's an, a jerk and an idiot. But yeah, so, 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 so I have to get the, the haircut. What have you been up to? So in game, I've been leveling my high mountain Torin shaman. Uh, I got him up to 120. Been getting my cloak. Turns out, if you uh, level on a different server, I don't know if it's faction based or whatever, you have to go through and do the stupid cloak quest again. Now on my alliance side, my death knight, I was able to skip some of those instances, but maybe I missed something. Could have been. A scrub moment on my part but now that he's up to 120 once i get his cloak going gonna do some horde side events like i've been doing on those bi-weekly streams that you've joined us on yes and those have been a lot of fun yeah those have been great so if there's any horde folks out there check it out uh we'll be getting those all set up and then the next tune i want to level to try to take advantage of this buff is either my druid cyrebosaurus <laughs> or some kind of paladin or some kind of tank class just to have that option for myself on the May I time. suggest a normal Tauren paladin? I just got mine to 120 itself with the heritage and I've changed his weapon to like a spear and it uh -huh. looks so interesting just seeing like a big Tauren paladin in the heritage with a spear instead of oh, just yeah. like the A normal sword or a mace. No, that would be awesome. I just got the the high mountain heritage and it looks awesome. Mm. Oh yeah, with the, with the the drums and the totems. Yeah. Oh, it looks so cool. I love it. That's definitely something I might consider because I love Tauren anyway, so I might go ahead and do that. So by doing it, you'll be tarring up through the, the levels again. Tarring it up hard. <laughs> It'll be utterly amazing. <laughs> i love it got it so, so so pete what have you been doing when you aren't playing wow and then we can get into what you've been doing when you're playing wow what, what i haven't been playing wow not a lot just getting on with normal life stuff but like in terms of like mo uh video games that aren't wow i'm normally playing my mobile video games which is like final fantasy record keeper and uh dragon ball z Dokken battle they're my two mobile games that i've played for like five years now I enjoy them a little bit, but in terms of WoW stuff, I mean, what haven't I done? I've leveled so much recently, just like everybody else has. Uh, yeah. In the, in the last week, I got my my gnome to one twenty, and that's got heritage now. I've started working on my void elf monk, and I've got it from like it was at thirty seven, I think, like Monday, and it got it to like fifty three in the last couple of days, just here and there. And then I've got it from fifty three to like seventy one, seventy two today. So it's interesting. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I just want to get it to eighty six so I can get to time walking and get my time walker in Reva farming in. Oh, as well as uh, pushing it to one twenty. What? Well, what's the amount that drops in in time walking? I don't know, Frasley. Um, I don't have it. It's one of the few dungeon mounts I don't have. How about you? <laughs> Do you have it? I'm not sure. 
I think I've got I've got the infinite time reaper. I got something oh you don't my, have. <laughs> do you? Well, that's a shame. I'll just have to keep riding around in my invincible every time. Oh, oh you. man. What about I could ride invincible? I could ride what else could I? My ashes of Allah. Oh. Oh, where else could we go? I don't know. I could ride my Jikun mount from Throne of Thunder. I could ride oh. the Kobold Diahorn from Throne of Thunder. I could oh. ride the other Diahorn from Undaster. Oh! Oh, you're killing me! You're killing me, Smalls! I mean, we're not getting the Salt Shaker. We're getting the whole Morton's. There we go. Yeah, I could ride. There. I could ride Mimiron's head around as well. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, Cap! Oh, you, oh, you, okay. <laughs> Oh, but you know one thing that that you can ride around, and I think I can ride around now. You did it, so I I challenged you to run eighteen runs of Altraxian yep. in a single reset. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, it took. Uh, so I did this on time of recording. I literally did this yesterday, Wednesday. I did it yesterday, Wednesday on the stream. Eighteen characters. At, thankfully, it was only Altraxian and not all the way to Deathwing. Otherwise, I would have lost my mind doing eighteen runs of Spine. But 18 runs for Altraxian, and oh, my mind was just gone. But yeah, we did it, and shockingly, no Altraxian drop. So I'm at like 278 attempts at Altraxian with no drop now. Ouch. So the next one that Frasley and I are talking about is I'm going to do 18 runs of Mythic Blackrock Foundry. Now, the raid itself, much more intriguing, uh, interest in the Dragon Soul. So that's not a problem. The problem is, is that it's going to take 25 to 30 minutes per run to get it done. <laughs> so, oh, man. If I stream it, it's going to be like nine, nine and a half hours. <laughs> On this Altraxian run, we were going to do a pizza, but timing of like prices and all that fluctuated. So what we did instead is we worked with Mr. Onion Knight and and I, we were able to get a awesome yes. emote for Peach Channel, and so then on the Blackrock Foundry, we're doing the same deal. That if you can do it all, another emote. Nice. Yeah, it's all good. It's all fun. It improves the channel in some way, and like yeah, uh, gets me to do more streaming as well. Which I, I've got to thank Frasley for supporting me as well. So. Oh, absolutely. I love I love your streams, and and I, I love your personality. People have said, especially in Among Us, we love your personality. We we're like, <laughs> oh come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> But you're also Detective Pete, so you're good. I am the detective. I am the detective. It is true. And Detective Pete on the case. And speaking of that, like this past week, we've just been playing games together, like doing Among Us with DPS crew, different fun things to do during the week. I did my Twitch sings with the Scruffy Druid on Monday, and I, Cap actually joined us for it, and that was fun. I, I sang a duet with, with Cap where we, we did suddenly Seymour, and thankfully he wasn't Heisenberg, so he didn't try to kill me. And then Monday night afterwards, the the converted podcast is looking to do game nights. So we did we played Jackbox, and that was a lot of fun. Oh, cool! And then in WoW, I, I ran Mythic Pluses with Sai, Carinsa, Lucas, and Michael. Th- that was fun. I and that was super fun. I enjoyed the fact that I got to try out DBM interrupt timers as the add-on, and that helped a lot because like it was cool. I was like interrupt, interrupt. Though Cap said the only bad thing is whenever I interrupt, I, I tell people I do it. <laughs> That's all right, man. You're just excited, and yeah. you were communicating with the group. Nothing wrong with that. And my heart of Azeroth is up to 80, so I thank Cap for running. Cap Harlow and I have been running Islands on Tuesday nights at 8, and that's been a lot of fun. Through that, I'm getting Fraz's heart up there level. My Volpirum Warlock is 112, so I was going to level some more today. Um, Because I, I, I love the, the heritage armor that I unlocked for the Volpir. I was going to level some more this before the stream. Then I restart my battle.net client. Something was appearing in the drop down menu. And I was like, holy carp! It is the alpha. I am like blown away. I'm like, what? What? So I spent three hours going through the alpha today. We're going to be talking about some of the things that we found in it, but they are doing an amazing job with it and really trying to go through and, and, and test things out, break things. I even tried dying in Shadowlands. And you can die in the Shadowlands, then you're just a weird disembodied spirit with no legs. Yeah. Hmm. So you're not even your character in the Shadowlands. So I, I, I think it's a pretty cool thing. But yeah, I, I, I found out you can die in the Shadowlands. Interesting. So I think that, that, that brings us into our, our main topic of the episode. So th- this very short episode we have this week. <laughs> so on, I think, Monday or Tuesday, Blizzard released a development update kind of saying... Alpha's launching this week. 
And they said that they're starting with the Bastion Zone and Necrotic Wake Dungeon. I did not get to do this dungeon in my run today because I queued up for it, but nobody was was running that at, at the time. And the Alliance starting zone's out, and it's customized tutorial for every class. Felt really cool giving people a glimpse of what is to come. Players with allied races, they'll start at level 10, and any non-allied race, Death Knight and Demon Hunters, they'll start at level 8, but they've got their own starting experience to play through. I right. believe allied race Death Knights still have that little intro sequence, and the non-allied Death Knights still have their original Wrath starting zone to do still. Oh, yeah. But no one's able to see if... Uh, how the original like level one starting zones work and all that because if you create a level one you're automatically in the new exiles reach area when you zone in it's like work in progress like like cut scenes are, are, are missing specific scenes but i'm liking how it is like it's fixing a, an issue i've had with wow that it's kind of walking you through here's how to do things you can disable it if you don't want it but i think it's gonna be nice to be like hey here's how you move around here's when you press this button here's what this menu does and it, it, and it like has big things saying, hey, here's where you're on the map. Here's what this does. They're really bringing in the tutorial feel. Because Wild's not always had a tutorial. And like it's like people were coming into it with, with a different mindset from the earlier days of like playing like Final Fantasy XI and different MMOs. Not really teaching you how to play the game in the game. My son is actually playing now. He's playing a Pandaren monk. And I've been kind of letting him do his thing. He has been like, hey, dad, how do I do this? And so today I was like, all right, bud, come with me. So I grabbed my warrior. It was like a level 25 or something like that. And he was a level 20. And I was like, we're going into the stockades and I'm going to teach you how to heal. Nice. So he and I went through and we two manned the stockades together. And he was just sitting there healing me. So I was like, okay, this is what you look for. This is what you're doing. So hopefully, like what you're saying, if if they can get you kind of on that path of, hey, if you're new to the game, this is something you should look for. This is how you should do it. I think that'd be awesome because not everyone has their dad to sit there and take him with them. Yeah, it's it's good. But something we noticed in uh, Frasley's little play session today in Exiles Reach is that your specializations are still locked at level 10. Yeah. The Exiles Reach dungeon basically unlocks. It seems to be a leveling dungeon which you can queue into from eight all the way up to 60 which is cool it's another uh additional dungeon to get all the way through it means you'll help new players but because of the new leveling scale system you can queue into dead mines and uh rage fire chasm at like like level seven level eight which without specializations i feel is going to be very hard especially since flash heal is a very expensive mana heal for a priest mm -hmm. um so you'll be going through dead mines flash healing which will be exciting it would be exciting because <laughs> you know if you choose discipline you get powered shield if you and renews and all that and bit very bits and pieces but it's like i feel like they're going to bring the specializations down to like level five they kind of have to yeah if they're allowing dungeons to go in at like level seven i don't know if, if like the, the if this is just a part of they haven't fully fleshed out the systems but yeah it, it, it was weird that i was able to queue for a dungeon even before i had done dire mall citadel which is the level 7 slash 10 zone for that area i want to see what the dire mall citadel does in terms of like will it be like hey when you're in a group here's what you should do don't go ahead of the tank but even then what's weird everybody queued as dps for that one so they weren't even branching out into different uh roles mm-hmm which, I mean, makes sense. At that point, you won't know what you want to do. Right. I would agree. It's a hard balance. And what, what I'm wondering is if, if people can queue for Dynamo Citadel as like a, a higher level player. Because then you either get the, oh, come on, you noob, do better. Or, hey, let's help you, noob. I, I could see both types of people <laughs> queuing up with them. I think it's going to be interesting ad adding it into the classic dungeon queue. Yeah, because it's going to have so many updated mechanics and ability. It's going to feel very out of place in the mm -hmm. dungeon finder yeah. compared to like a lot of stuff that's there. It's going to be real weird. And I, I hope it's a good dungeon. We'll have to see. We'll see more as it comes on. I imagine the videos will start dropping tomorrow of it and everything else. So, yeah, I, I spent a good like five, 10 minutes waiting to get in and it seemed like nobody was was going to be queued up for it. So that's why I went back to, to Bastion. But I, I wanted to, I wanted to run it before the show to see what it was like. They were saying, and, and this is a reminder, the alpha is not a demo. The alpha is what, what they feel they have finished and bringing two alpha servers to test. And they said they're going to be bringing things to test servers as things are completed and that they're ready for feedback. And then once everything's on the alpha servers, 
Ada is going to begin at that point with an even wider group of group of players, and they are really working on things like their their unpruning classes, which was fascinating. That like you're going to have your class talents and abilities, and then from there you have your individual spec abilities. It, it's kind of weird. I took a warrior template at 50 and I went for arms and I was able to use things from like fury. So th- it, the the spell book is very pre warlords in the fact that it's still got all the little tabs for all the different specs and you can just dive in and out of the stuff that you've got available to it. And that was removed and like moved into the whole, you're a warrior tab. This is what you can use, which is, is good. I feel like newer players might get a little thrown out when specializations become a thing. And we'll have to see how that happens. And if they get the guide once they hit level 10, because yeah. that, that's the interesting thing I want to know is, will the system with this new leveling be intuitive enough to turn around and go, well, you're this specialization, but you've got these extra spells and abilities in these other tabs if you want to use them. And it will get to the point. It was mentioned a lot in an interview between Ian and Slootbag about how they want to get back to a point where using abilities is more of a skill-based thing. If it's intuitive enough that the players know that the other spells and abilities are there and they'll be the ones that they want to use, then yeah, it'll be good, but... We'll have to see what happens. No, I'm just excited for them to bring back the class flavors. Like, I mean, everything's been kind of not, I mean, it's been doled down to a point where like back in the day, if you're a shaman, for example, and you're playing enhancement, you don't forget the other things and then you just magically learn them and forget them. Like, so just from a, like an RP perspective, it makes more sense to me that they would be kind of going back to that whole, here's our baseline. Here's a shaman. You get these things coming back and you know, these things baseline and then going down the new old design philosophy of, okay, now you're in an enhance or an elemental like focusing in on your class and enhancing those abilities and making you feel like you're that spec, but you're still a shaman at heart. Yeah. I'm excited for that. I think it's good in the sense that having access to all the abilities allows you to learn them if you choose to learn them other than leveling as a given spec and not touching them because you don't have access to them because you're not another spec, you know? Yeah, because I mean, I've even been on runs where even with people that are like, say somebody is a druid that's more DPS, it is nice when they can pull out their healing spells in a pinch to, to save you. Yep. Or as a resto shaman dropping your flame tongue totem and doing some DPS like you used to be able to do. I mean, yeah. you still do a lot, but... Wind Fury might be coming back. You've seen that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two-handed enhancement. Let's do it. That was actually referenced in the interview as well. You've got more chance of single-minded fury coming back than you have two-handed enhancement. I know. Well, they're doing two-handed Frost DKs. Two-handed Frost DKs, two-handed Windwalker Monks, which I'm excited for because I really enjoyed that play style, even though single-handed Windwalker was better. And it probably still will be. I mean, that's the thing. Like, They might just end up just putting a lot of this stuff back into the game uh, for flavor. This is my big thing. With everything that we've seen so far in the data mining, I like the idea that going to the Shadowlands allows us to use all these dead and buried things from previous expansions. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Weapon oils, there's sharpening stones. There's lots of stuff from previous expansions that are just dead and gone that we've got access to in Shadowlands. And I just like the whole idea that everything that's been binned has been in the Shadowlands and we've come back and we found it all. <laughs> just under a rock. I mean, what if in a way it's a resurrection of the player base and, and, and like the mechanic? Because... During the the interview, Ian again referenced something that, that that we've heard from like the West Next panel that they're getting rid of Titan forging, War forging, corrupted. All that stuff is they're getting away away from, which is exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, we already knew that Titan forging was dead and not coming back. We knew that corruption wasn't going to be a thing going forward. It's nice to know there's not going to be a new thing to replace corruption. It's good to hear that that's definitely not going to be a thing. But it also means that because the way that loot's going to work, they'll be looking at doing less loot drops, which I already dislike because personal loot is the main thing that they've got. It's still a layer of RNG that I don't like. Like, at least when I cleared a dungeon, there was loot on every boss, regardless of if it went to someone or it got sharded, you know? At least I could see the loot and it felt tangible. Personal loot, I just hate the system because... More often than not, I've gone through Heroic Nihilotha and got maybe one piece off 12 bosses, and that feels bad. Yeah. 
Whereas I watch another person get a piece of loot off every boss. Yeah. And going through classic, I do like need and greed. I I, th- I thought because right now when I when I when I got on group, someone's like, "Hey, anybody need this?" It would be nice if if you could still be like, "Okay, here's the item. I don't need it, so I'm gonna pass, and somebody else who needs it can get it." But not everybody thinks like that. That's the problem. Like, okay. Even even still to the fact that if you ran an LFR. And because it's filled with up to 29 other people who you don't know and you get a bit of loot, you'll have someone whispering and go need with a question mark. Not even open a dialogue, just need and a mm-hmm. question mark. Yeah, and, and I've had that too. I've had somebody be like, hey, do you need this? And I'm, and I'm thinking in my head, uh, it's an upgrade or it's an appearance. And I'm like, Well, that's okay. the thing. It's, it's a big problem. And especially with things that we hear with more players especially people that use the game as a form of escapism and to get away from stuff that plagues them like anxiety and just being straight out of the blue, having people just, you don't know, just just whisper you and go need full caps question mark. And then when you don't answer, you know, and then you get another person that does it. And a lot of people with some anxiety can't deal with that. You know, I I get it because it's someone you don't know. So I I think it's kind of an interesting quick thing. I, I, Michael, who I've been on with with, with the, the Gina project, yeah, who is now a night of Chipotle, by the way, yeah. <laughs> and we were kind of talking about last night about like that fear of going into a new group, into a new raid. And I was saying, I said the good thing is you know Sai. I said you know that that Sai is a good person. Zipper would always say, and among us, he's a good good man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I try. <laughs> But I get the anxiety. It's I feel better going into a pug sometimes when I'm on stream because then I, if, if, if the pug's getting me down, I can just vent to the chat and chat will be there to, to, to pick me up. But when you're going by yourself, it, it can be stressful. It is. And that's a huge thing that on my show that I'm trying to help folks with is not everyone is, you know, a big doing the need thing. And in, in groups that you can kind of control. But no, like we try to create that environment and that's just kind of what I do. So when I make a pug, my environment is everyone's here to help each other. We're going to do the thing and we're going to do it together. And if someone gets a piece of loot and someone can use it, great. But there's no pressure to funnel gear or do any of that stuff, right? Yeah. But if you get into the pug where other people are trying to push higher content, then that's kind of where you run into those issues. Or you get those people who are leveling alts or whatever. But yeah, but to go to that I think the biggest thing too, when entering a pug, is just knowing that that's coming. And I just tell everybody, yeah, I need it. I need a transmog. <laughs> Look good, play good, sucker. <laughs> and yeah. honestly, like they can't report you for that. Like you, you're just answering their question. You're not, yeah. you're not disparaging them. You're not being rude or anything. You're just saying, yeah, I need it. And it's already done. I'd say I need it promptly mount up on my yak sell it <laughs> i need it for gold <laughs> raw gold i'm somebody that in a lfr and lsg i have given away a transmog i needed because someone needed it ahead of me i'm i'm not, I'm not gonna be like that that saint even though i was hanging out in bastion this morning gorgeous zone like i heard bells in the winds i only noticed that the grass and trees branches waved in the wind and sir so Ununited and harlow cool. noted the unease of the colors you get the feeling of light in a death zone. I, I still don't trust Bastion. There's like this. So Bastion's meant to be past the intro scenario in the more and whatever. Like Bastion's meant to be that first zone that we all go to because we know that unlike the last two expansions, it's a linear leveling structure and we'll be going through the zones one by one, at least on mains, you know, on the first yeah. time through. Bastion is going to be the first thing you come to. And I do like that the story is going to go through all those. I, I, I like that, unlike with BFA, where we had the, the non-linear story, we'll have a flow on our mains. But well, what was your first feeling like when you finished creating a character and you got there? Like, obviously, other than the big swarm of people that were there. Yeah, oh, like uh, seeing Salute and uh, Sko next to me, I was like, whoa, I'm not, being next to all those big people. Just like, made, made this little gnome, because I rolled a gnome warrior named Frasley. But... <laughs> It did not seem different than BFA demo, and I enjoyed the BFA demo. I thought, thought that was gorgeous. So to me, it felt good, and I enjoyed this time being able having a little bit more time to walk through it. Because when at the, at the demo, we had forty five minutes to do it all. So I'm trying to create my character, soak it all in. Ah, uh, you're trying to do it without the feeling of being rushed. Gotcha. Yeah, 
I, I'm not looking at the story a lot right now because I, I kind of want to save some of that for when it's live. Right now, I'm kind of testing systems, seeing how they are working, reporting bugs. They've done a good job making it easy to report bugs, and, and, and I'm, I'm impressed at that. I feel like Shadowlands is making a lot of good steps. I think there's a lot of good stuff, but then I don't want to have to be that, that negative Nancy, but it's, it's probably best to not look at this as the new shiny toy until we get further down the alpha process and we actually see stuff like Torghast, these later yeah. zones. Because you've got to remember that just like with any brand new game, that starting area is there to draw you in. And then it's the rest of the content that exists within the game that we've got to see if it will hold our attention. You know? Yeah. Because I, I think a lot of us felt really good in BFA when it first started out. And then as we got farther in... yeah. I love WoW, and, and, and I, I still love it. I play it many days a week when I'm not playing other games. You want to see, does it keep us for another two years after that? It's all well and good having that leveling experience. Is that leveling experience going to be good enough to play again when we take our alts through? Yeah. Is I want to see that end game that we, we're expected to log on and do every day to get ready for dungeons and raiding, if that's going to be worth logging in every day. You know, they've talked about a World Quest 2.0 system. Is that going to be better? Am I still going to just end up doing the same world quests and daily quests on, you know, that I'm just going to run into? Is there going to be a bigger pool of stuff that I don't have to replay the same thing like every day? just to stay on top of my character. Like they've already said, as I fully expected that there'll be a limited amount of going into Torghast and everything else. Like how limited is that going to be? Yeah, I think somebody mentioned, I can't remember who said it on an episode of stories, but it'd be really nice. I think it was Jason actually literally this week that if they cap the amount of legendary materials that you can get from Torghast in a given week, then you can just do as many tries in Torghast as you want. You know, stuff yeah. like that would be really cool. I mean, they probably have to get there. They'll take feedback, but I just want to see this content and see if it's stuff that's going to hold my attention because I love questing. First time questing is brilliant in any new expansion. It's oh, just yeah. the rest of the game. During the interview, Ian was, was telling Slute that things like there will be limits on how on, on the runs and that there'll be ways to earn more keys and, and, and one interesting then, thing that, that they picked up is rewards can be more powerful if, if you can't spam run it for 20 hours straight, which is good. Just like the visions, I might be, be a bad example. I don't want to just spam visions. Right. Like if we're comparing the visions thing, I think that it would be better if they would allow us more opportunities to run that, like get a way to get the visions a little, little bit easier so we can get those jugs of goo whatever the hell they're called i can't remember what they're called i think to fix visions all they have to do is just half the price of a key yeah give us some more because i you know i still need seven pages on my shaman and i'm just like Ugh. and i only have one of the vessels that i can go and use at this point in time so i have to go through grind the dailies do the the weeklies i think that if we can get a better cost to having like you're saying, having those costs, give us some more time, but also don't let me do it every, like whenever I want, as far as as many times as I want. Kind of keep that uh, gated a little bit, but give us a chance to actually have more ways to get those visions, the coalescing visions. I think that would help a lot. And I think if they can find that balance between not having enough, like I feel like right now, and not feeling like I have to run it for 17 hours a day, every day, just to be caught up and ready to rock and roll. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, we, we talk about visions because it's uh, Torghast is obviously going to be an evolution of the vision. It's what Blizzard are even mentioning more than they're saying it's closer to a mage tower type thing. But remo if you remove the cost of entry from a vision so that the the real thing that you want to go in there for is to upgrade your cloak for the week and then you put a limiter on how many mementos you can earn in a given week but then you just let people go nuts with what they want to do in there so if you've already earned like ten thousand mementos in a given week you can't earn any more but you can still keep going in because you haven't managed to get all of your pages for your quest you can still do that because it's free to enter you can attempt to go higher uh, and try and get all, all of your masks done on a push because it's free to enter, but you can't earn anything else in terms of mementos, but you've got, you know, there, there's, 
if you put the limiters on what you can earn rather than the cost of entry, I think that's a better way to look at it. Like capping stuff is easier to do because it means that if you feel like I just did a mythic plus, I've managed to push it this week. I got a bit of better gear. I'll go ahead and try my horrific vision, you know, another time this week because it's free to enter, but I've hit all my caps already. I I think that might be a better way of doing things is just to cap the rewards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And ease off on the barrier to entry. Yeah. I am impressed that they've, that they've said that with, with, with with Torghast that you will have new environments and, and creatures added it. So that way it won't feel stale. It's it's my issue that I have with the World Quest. I know they add them, but the, the World Quest got stale at, at a certain point. And they did announce that World Quests are coming. They said there'll be no emissaries, but they're going to have covenant callings. A little, they said a little bit more flexible. Thorgath excites me because I've been, I like those things that I, I can play repeatedly. Almost like a roguelike, because like I was playing Risk of Rain 2. And that game is exciting because it's different. When you're running on it, you don't know which boss you're going to get. And, and I was like... If they can really do Torghast like that, it's going to be great. My my main concern is how varied will it be? Yeah, like we really thought the islands were going to be. They they said it was like it's going to be different every time you. Go. Oh yeah, but it ends up that the islands be it's three islands, so the layout's going to be the same, and it's just the mobs that are on the island that are going to be slightly different. Which you know? I don't even pay attention to. I, I I hate to say it when I'm on the islands. I'm just like, oh okay, I I, I like this one hits harder. Uh, Kill the thing, like, get the thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Win the like, thing. Yeah, I'd like Blizzard to be very. And I apologize if this sounds like I'm just being really down on everything, even though I haven't had a chance to get in and, and like have a look at things. But I just feel like I want to see what they can offer us before I I'm like super happy and excited for what they're offering to give us. Yeah, and for anybody uh, who who knows Pete deep down. Pete loves WoW, but but Pete wants the best for it too. I mean, and and that's one thing I got I got to know about you is that you are constructively critical. That you want it, you want you want it to be the best that they can. I try every time I bring up a problem with the game to bring up something they can do to fix it, and I think that's the way we should look at everything, rather than just turn everything into a massive Reddit thread of I hate X because of this, but I won't tell you a reason to fix it. Why, you know, like. I'd rather go, this is the problem I see with visions. Here's my example to fix it. Yeah. This is what I can see will happen with Torghast. Maybe if you do this, you know, you alleviate the problem with... I mean, the biggest problem that vision said was, like, people felt like they couldn't practice their runs. They felt like it was too much hassle to farm the stuff to get in. It was too limited on a weekly basis. And you can just do that by just changing the way the system works and if you screwed up one run now you can't get another token to get in now you're screwed so, yeah and, and i will say i i, I appreciate when, when when caps run with me because caps helped me feel more at ease but there are times that i put off putting or doing a, a vision run because like i don't want this disappointment i'm like oh i'm just gonna go level an alt i mean today i was poss- possibly do a vision then i decided to do alts and that went out the window, of course. But yeah, it feels punishing and almost in a non-permissible way. I, I, I would even like it if there was some way that if I failed a vision, it could be like, okay, can I just do something a little extra this week? More than what I typically do. More than that stuff to get one more vessel. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've got to the point where on my main, I literally just fly to the assault zones and I just do the little events, park it around the map, four to five of those, and I've got the box and I'm done. And I just do that on alts. I don't go there every day now because I feel my time is better spent doing other things in the game. Yeah. And like, just by doing that, I have about 100k visions on my main. I've got about 80k on my Death Knight, who's like my secondary character at the moment. Because I, I just, I'm not doing the content on the Death Knight that worries it. And I'm pretty much done on the main. So there's no push to do anything and it now means that i've got visions there if i want to help a friend out if they've got an alt they want to take through but the problem remains is that i still if i want to help anybody or i want to do stuff down the line because we still need to upgrade the cloak to like a hundred resistance then i've got to keep doing this on a weekly basis i've got to put aside half an hour to an hour to go to two zones yeah doing the dailies i mean you're only getting what 300 per 
And if you do all the dailies for a week, it adds up to like one extra vessel or something like that. Yeah. Some yeah. I mean, make the dailies. If I do both of them each day, give me a vessel. And then I will use that vessel happily. And like Pro Jolly's saying uh, in the chat, it should have made the gear guaranteed corrupted from the visions from the get go. Oh, totally absolutely. agree with that as well. Absolutely yeah. Absolutely agree with that. Yeah. And that is one thing that they did bring up during the the interview is that they are trying to get feedback sooner. And 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 th they did say that they don't want to add too many systems late in alpha because it doesn't give enough time to work on it. That's the sensible thing of thinking about it, you know? Blizzard have gone into this alpha in the complete opposite way that they've gone about Warlords, you know? The last time they were this active in an alpha was back in Mists, where they turned around and they had dev water coolers for everything they were thinking and implementing and everything like that. And that's what they're doing here. You know, I can, we can obviously see now that we're going to have the alpha and the beta cycle for at least eight months. We're not going to get Shadowlands until 2021 at this point. Which I'm actually okay. I, I I know it's a drought, but if they open, if they keep opening up the floodgates too, if, if they keep bringing people in, like, like mm -hmm. today was wave one. I want more people in alpha. I'm not trying to let's say like for somebody from the other side, like, I don't want to be the only person over here. I want both of you over here. I mean, right. I, I want us breaking in this game. So we can make it better so we're not having a game that's broken for, for two years till the next expansion or, or the next patch. But yeah, to kind of add to the drought piece, like this is the most I've ever been engaged in the game at this stage. Like yeah. our guild just got AOTC and I'm like hungry to level alts. So if I have more time to get more classes up so I can try new things come Shadowlands, that's just going to make me happy and I'm going to want to keep playing Yeah. once we get there counterpoint so, to that though would you be as engaged with that if we didn't have the 100 percent xp buff oh, oh yeah i totally would be right now just because i mean my, for me my son's getting into it yeah i mean yeah it helps i do a podcast about it <laughs> well yeah no that absolutely does I'll, yeah. I'll absolutely agree with you that it does infuse you yeah when, like when you're talking about a game sweet but i mean <laughs> i i it's allowing me more time to explore and experiment and, and honestly, I want Shadowlands to be good. Yeah. Because the way the current mentality is going out there with a lot of things is if it's not good, people are just turning on it immediately and saying it's garbage. It sucks. Don't do it. Go play Final Fantasy 14 or whatever, which I think is a terrible game. Sorry, guys. I know. I hate that game. But that's because I tried playing the intro quest line and I wanted to throw my computer out of my window the, because it was so boring and if they the, fixed that then it would be awesome but no the, the 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 beginning of the game still very, feels very classic wow go do your quest piss off back <laughs> go hand it in and go and do some more it still feels very classic wow in terms of what it does the later expansions they feel so much better it's still very much that but the thing about final fantasy is that the story is f way more engaging than war, war oh it's an amazing story like i couldn't get into it i was like i have another cut scene with this giant green dude in a speedo talking to me and i just i got distracted hildebrand, I, I like hildebrand Hild hildebrand hildebrand is amazing <laughs> and honestly like if people like it it's that's their prerogatives it's just not for me i couldn't do it now I want to go into uh, like some more like those quality of life things that we've been finding from the alpha. And what I need to ask both of you, because you might understand the mechanics more than I do. Right. Blizzard is changing AOE and they are limiting it right now to a cap of five to eight targets. Okay. So uh, before anybody really jumps on this and they have put out more clarifications on this, I think they've literally put out a blue post about literally this tonight, but this has been tested and put in the game several times on a beta that they haven't then implemented into the game. And it's very different. And the big thing that you've got to ask yourself when you look at this is, are they doing it? And then they're going to put less trash in packs. Are they doing it to make CC more relevant and then make dungeons harder on a sort of cataclysm level? Are they doing it because they want classes to feel more in line there are some classes already which have caps on damage hitting there are some classes which don't and they scale so much better and a demon hunter is one of those they don't have any caps on their aoe and i believe the essence which is the big laser beam doesn't have a cap on aoe targets either so it's just become a thing in dungeons and packs where they just 
do these massive AOE packs because if a tank's good enough and the healer's good enough to keep them up, then more often than not, you'll see a tank just pick everything up and they'll take the classes with no AOE caps just to mince it down. And we've talked about it before on stories about Mythic Plus changes and how they've changes they've done remove some classes to be necessary. It could remove classes to be necessary if you don't require the one singular tank that can tank everything and not give a damn, like a Blood Death Knight. So Blizzard have turned around and gone... We've definitely heard a lot of feedback from players while bursting down larger and larger pools has become an early, overly dominant tactic in much of the game, which is true. A lot of people who level outside of uh, just group leveling has always been grab everything, AOE it down. It's been a solid tactic for anybody that's wanted to go for world first of any class. And in dungeons, you see it in leveling dungeons. They'll grab everything and they'll expect uh, DPS to murder everything down and do everything else. So there's no clear role, is what they've said. So while there are a number of variables contributing to this trend of high burst area of effect damage against an unlimited number of targets has made it increasingly possible for players to tear down large groups of enemies without the players ever facing proportionate level of danger. True. In Shadowlands, we're looking at changes which would broaden the field of tactical options and in the process more clearly differentiate the strength of classes in a variety of AoE situations. That one sentence there is a lot of fucking techno babble for fucking PR. <laughs> just, just on its own, that is such a bullshit sentence. For example, we'd like to see Outlaw Rogues or Fury Warriors excel in situations with four to five targets. Ideally, I believe those two classes don't have AoE caps right now. If they do, Fury Warriors definitely don't because of Whirlwind and everything else, and I think Outlaws might do. But if you take those two, Outlaw Rogues would never out-DPS a Fury Warrior in the same situation, so they want to bring those together. While ranged casters like Frost Mages and Affliction Warlocks perform better in sustained damage against groups of five or more because they can just multi-dart and Frost Nova to get more procs of everything, which is what they're talking about there. To accomplish this, we need to revisit the maximum number of targets that many abilities can hit, also known as the abilities target cap, and adjust them accordingly. In situations where a target cap doesn't make sense, we're adding a new kind of damage fall-off that causes the damage done to each target to be reduced gradually as the number of targets increases. That, specifically, is something they had in, I believe, in Warlords. So you yep. could pick up everything you had a uh, fixed damage to your primary target it did so much damage to four to five more targets after that and then after that the damage dropped i believe it was by 40 percent of an additional 10 percent per target or something ridiculous something like that like that yeah so if you're a casual player like frasley who'll fight one to three to five enemies at a time you won't notice anything different but the players who go for that world first leveling scheme for the players that quest and just pick up massive packs and arcane explosion whirlwind do everything to get those down they're going to see it because they'll be more threatened because their damage isn't just going to be killing these things and i think you'll find they've taken a lot from the classic leveling structure where that was where a lot of people were leveling on classic and they don't want that to be the coming thing because in that that's where a lot of the farming techniques have taken place is learning from doing the classic leveling on private servers, that in the actual classic, which is what we all saw. And people were like, how did you get that fast? How did you level? I was just like, I AOE'd everything. Just mm -hmm. nuked it into the floor. And it's the same. Like, yeah, it's cool. And that sentence, that structure alone, what Blizzard have said, makes a lot of sense if you think about it. I'll notice it a little bit because my demon hunter literally can just pick everything up, I beam it, and then just nuke everything down. Hey, I've got no AOE limiter, so I just blow everything into the floor before it's even threatening. And that's why my damage will be relatively high in any sort of dungeon situation if the group's high enough. But is it a good change? It's going to be a change that makes players feel crap. You're nerfing a player's power, essentially. And yeah okay it's bad but we need to get out of this whole echo chamber situation where because one person has said it's bad it then hits them because a player refines that and they go yeah he said it's bad i agree with it and then they'll push that onwards to everybody else if you want to have unlimited damage caps go and play games like diablo and action rpgs that sort of game because those are the things that you pull big groups for, get the loot drops and everything else. And the game rewards you and it makes you feel like that. WoW is not an action RPG. 
And I've said this be- again on stories. If they want it to feel like an action RPG, they need to change the way that you, we play the game. And it can't feel like it does now where it's an action bar MMO. It yeah. can't feel like that if you want. Combat. Yeah, cool down. Yeah. The combat system with the GCD doesn't feel good for that sort of gameplay. And I feel like this might have been the intention they were aiming for with slowing the GCD down. If you can't AOE hard enough, you know, if you if you can't push the button hard enough, you can't kill everything. And that might have been like the really bad way that they would have fixed it, but they're not fixing the GCD anyway. So I don't know. And I can see that they might not want to take away from Diablo. And I, I know that they're slightly different, but you want to make WoW feel different. You want to make WoW feel unique. Mm-hmm. Well, WoW's also been around for so long. Like if you... Yeah. I think a lot of people are frustrated with some of the changes they've made because they're trying to put it in this action RPG environment. They're trying to make it like a hybrid game. Well, this game's been around forever. This game is not an action RPG like like we're talking about. And I think if they're going to do something like this, like, you know, I play an elemental shaman right now, and I like being able to murder everything. Chain lightning. Yeah, chain lightning plus earthquake equals oh. lots of things dying instantly. And if I accidentally pull too many mobs and I'm only limited down to four or five or whatever it's going to be, I'm dead. I'm going to die. The problem is, though, if Blizzard are taking it towards being that action RPG, even if they don't change the gameplay, we circle back around to what we've said earlier with the loot drops being shit. Mm -hmm. Personal loot doesn't make the game feel good. And having that sort of thing. Yeah, it's cool. I love going into classic older raids getting everything and getting this massive pile of raw gold it's fantastic but there's no loot there which is in diablo if i went and did a whole map area i'm probably going to get a couple of legendaries a couple of set greens and everything else but that sort of loot system doesn't exist in wow right or i mean i noticed in the doing the visions for example i'll get a piece of gear but it's like i level 420 it's not even relevant to me I know I have to do the the mass and everything to get it higher up and all that stuff. But like, if I don't do the mask, the game wants you to wear the mask to get better rewards. It puts you in a bigger sense of danger because your sanity damage is increased, the health of the mobs is increased, but you get the better reward in the forms of mementos from <clears throat> the mobs that you kill, the chest that you get at the end, and everything else. I get that, but that's not a tangible enough reward in sense of having the AOE to kill everything yeah, and, and then see things drop. That's the lure that Diablo has. Mm-hmm. To go to go and do your, your riffs, kill everything, get the loot, push yourself to do those harder riffs to get that even more and better loot. That's the lure of Mythic Plus. That's, that's where Mythic Plus has got it right. You push Mythic Plus as a group and you get the better. But where is that in terms of a single player scenario? Yeah. And that's where I think Torgas is trying to fit that niche. Hor- Horrific Visions is trying to get there, but it does it in such a, uh, a heavy-fisted way in that the maps are the same on a rotating basis and the uh, affixes are just bad in places, like legitimately horrible to play with. Oh, same as I'm the affixes in Mythic Plus. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I hate yeah. that one. Leaden foot in the really bad areas, you know? that That's the horrible one because... We all like to move as fast as we can. There's so many movement abilities in the game that Leaden Foot just slows us down and we hate it. Yeah. But there's no tangible reward. I'll open the box at, uh, after doing my five mask vision and I'll get memento, 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 memento. Oh, my cloak upgrade at level 15. Maybe a pet. I'm all for doing more cosmetic rewards. And if they aim for Torghast to be an expansion overarching feature where we're pushed to go in there after every patch and they keep filling it with more cosmetic rewards it could be good but i need to have that sense that i'm not going to enter on a daily slash weekly basis into torghast and see the same interior of ice crown citadel you know i don't want to see that week one week three week five i'd like to go in there and see different things like even if they manage to work out a map section that's actually random every time you get it and it's not a fixed map in Torghast, that's fine. I don't mind ending up walking aimlessly trying to figure out what I'm doing and fighting the system. I'd love that. If it's got the same interior, I'll deal with that. A different randomness map that I think the last time they even remotely tried that was Lucid Nightmare. Yes. You went into mm-hmm. the Gaolai Hall type things and yeah. like the, the map blocks you got lost and everything else. That was cool. You know, the maze and that. 
have something like that where the blocks like you've got to have so many rooms that you can visit that's how the tower of the dead done it in did it in final fantasy 14 so many rooms that were random had some buffs had certain enemies and then you kill everything to get work your way up the floors and i hope that's what a torghast is going to be slightly based on in terms of its structure but there has to be decent enough rewards without so much of a gear locking system and we've gone from aoe capping back to visions and everything else again and i don't know why i'm back talking about torghast again well and i i think that's a a good place to move on we have like three more quick things i want to i want to mention so blizzard watch talks about how shadowlands will be getting rid of reputation requirements and lucas was saying that it looks like the rep requirements for alley races is gone but you still have to do the quest achievement. Yeah, but that's not horrible. That's what people want. Yeah, oh, absolutely. The people don't want to grind rep. No. To uh, get access to the allied races. I mean, you're still going to have to have a max level character that's got access on... You're going to want to have a 120 horde and a 120 alliance, you know? Yeah. Just standardly, because there's the achievements for doing both sides, and then that way you unlock everything. Like, that's my main dri- driver. Like, after I level a max alliance, I do a max horde just so I've got access to everything. Mm-hmm. And... I know people that would unlock Volpira or Mechanome, but they were like, they just can't be bothered to do the rap. And I'm like, I, I get it. I no, get it as I'm well. I'm right there on my Volpira, and I just don't want to do it. <laughs> I, I, I think, I mean, the only way I can reasonably think they could do it now is drop the, the rep buff to world quest that they did in Legion where you get extra rep depending on the level of the of the world quest. So if it's elite, you get like 100. Like if it's the purple world quest elite, it's 150. It's uh, 100 if it's just the blue elite one and 75 if it's blue. And if it's just the normal standard one, you get like 50 still. You know, it's still an upgrade to what it is now. It's still a slog, but it's a better slog, kind of, technically. And the only other physical way I could kind of see them doing it would be uh, while we, if they extend the 100% XP buff, stick in a 50% rep buff. Yeah. Oh, because, because the World Quest rep buff weekly doesn't affect uh, your assault reps because they're not World Quests. Mm. And then flying into the next one, uh, Jedi Fay brought the, up this article from uh, Wowhead that characters can now learn flying at level 25. So the, the quote is characters who go through Exiles Reach will learn Apprentice riding automatically when leaving Exiles Reach. Death Knights and Demon Hunters learn automatically when created level 8, as well as the Alley Races when created level 10. And they're saying that they that they cannot verify level 1 characters through a normal starting zone as those are automatically assigned to Exiles Reach. So it's level 10 uh, across the board for base riding, 17 for epic riding, and then 25 for base flying. It's 27 for epic flying, and then 30 if you want to unlock 310, which isn't bad. And I, I like that, because I I like when I finally get that faster flying. And do I assume that this means every expansion other than Shadowlands at this point can you can fly in once you get all that? I don't know. Yeah. It, that, that might be the way to do it. Like, the only reason I think it's tied into level 30 specifically is because you need flying in Wrath to do Storm Peaks and Ice Cream. Oh, yeah. Because I've done those. I'm like, wow, without flying, this, this would have been a pain in the... Well, you fu- had to have flying. You, you were expected yeah, you- to be max level by the time you got to Storm Peaks. Okay. You couldn't do it. And you just couldn't. <laughs> then we, one final one that uh, Pete saw from Desmophisto on Twitter, that mail shows up on the character selection screen. On your character selection screen, on the like the left of it, if you've got mail, it'll just show a little mail ticket. It's a small quality of life thing, but oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. Oh, huge. Yeah, that's going to be sweet. Yeah, the amount of times I send mail to an alt and just forget about it. Yeah. And it's gone. Deleted from eternity. I, I'll log into one and be like, how long has it been? Now, can you hover over to see how long? I don't know. I don't think it's going to be that intensive because okay. if you've got multiple mails, then... I should just go in and whenever I see that, just go in there and get rid of it. But yeah, I, I like that because I've got alts and like I've been doing selling stuff on the auction house on different alts and it's nice now to, to not forget. Yeah. No, I get that. Uh, it's, it's just going to be good to see loot. Yeah. And I think so far we can all say that we are hopeful for the future what we've seen so far looks good and as we were saying if wizard can keep being as open as, they're, as they've been on all the stuff that they've been talking about and it's not like they want to be open up but the feedback this is looking like a good expansion yeah i don't think we're gonna see anything more from blizzard uh until at least tuesday now uh, i'm not sure about you guys over in america but we're gonna hit easter weekend from oh, yeah. tomorrow until monday so 
them dropping it now and coming back to all the feedback on Tuesday. I mean, they'll probably monitor it, but we probably won't see blue posts or any big any anything else of subsequent nature until Tuesday at the very earliest. And I do like a suggestion by Harlow about separate tabs for Horde or Alliance characters on the on the character selection screen would be nice. I'm like, I agree. That would be... I saw something on Reddit where people want them to squish down so you can see how many characters on the screen at a given time. Well, they just put those icons in next yeah. to the names. I've got more my Alliance on one server and all my Horde on another, to be fair. So... Yeah. I'm I, I'm going that way. I, I got a Volpira on Wormer's Accord. I've got Horde on Boulder Fist. I've got my Alliance over on... Airy Peak. See, I, I, I'm, I'm all over the place. And as Jennifer was, was saying, there is so much more that's being data mined every day. Like we, we even have stuff that we weren't able to fit into this episode. There's just so much. I think, I think the biggest thing that Wildhead have been doing today is they're looking at all of the cosmetics that you can do on your character customization and trying to get it up on their dressing room. Yeah. Because obviously they're not available on Alpha just yet. No. So, <clears throat> which is good. Yeah, interesting to see a lot of it. They're doing some real good work over there at Wowhead, as always. Oh yeah, and th- that was the first thing that Valissi asked me. But it was like, "Hey, have you checked out the Blood Elves hair set? There's no cosmetics." I checked my gnome, same cosmetics. So I'm, I said, "Not in there yet." No, it's not available now for soon. Yes. Um, but yeah, no. I <laughs> if we go by older alpha stuff, like I imagine, not next week, the week after, they will put in another zone up the level cap. And then, like, every two weeks, they'll do that. And by the time they up the level cap to 60, uh, they'll start putting in the end game stuff. Like, we'll have access to the full spread of dungeons. They might put in the heroic version of the dungeon so people can gear up, but there'll be co- uh, presets and everything else. And then we'll have Torghast to go and check. So it's going to be a busy few couple of months. And um hoping to be in there testing it with you, Mr. Frasley. Oh, I want you, I want you there. And I want everybody in there. I, I feel alone other than the stream, like... Come on, come on, Blizzard, let my friends in. <laughs> but I want to thank you both for joining me tonight on Frazzlecast. I've I've been excited ever since uh, I, I, yesterday when, it, when we had to change schedules. And, and I, I was like, OK, th- this is great timing because the second I invited both of you on here, this whole news dropped. I was like two perfect oh, people. That was to bring awesome. Up. Yeah. Yeah. I'll talk about anything. Just give me a topic. Uh, absolutely. And <laughs> Warcraft, Warcraft is my little nutshell. So. Where can we find the both of you on the interwebs? So I started with Sai, so I'll start with Pete this time. Uh, as always, guys, uh, you can find my main Twitter account at Titans Creed. If you want just my streaming and video uploads, I've got daily videos going up over on youtube.com slash Project Phoenix Productions, which is currently doing the Let's Race series I do with my good friend Andy, who used to live in Britain, but he lives in Canada. Uh, we race games like once a month. I think the next game we're looking to do is going to be next Tuesday, uh, Tuesday coming up, and it's going to be Cluster Truck. Ooh. So we're going to be doing that. That's going to be interesting to do, um, getting through all of that. But we've got daily videos going up, which is Wind Waker. And then we've got stream archives of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and then a Hyperlight Drifter, which was actually a standout game. I really, We both went into that blind. That was a lot of fun to play. Otherwise, every Sunday, you can find myself and Mr. Frasley doing stories around Azeroth, and we've got guests and that coming on. I think it's a standalone show this week, as we're just going to be talking Shadowlands, probably, just like every other bastard on the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if you want to hear me and Frasley talk more about that after we've had a couple more days of Shadowlands, come there. Otherwise, you can find me streaming over at twitch.tv slash Project Phoenix Productions or my YouTube content at youtube.com slash Project Phoenix Productions. And Sai, where can we find you? So you can find my show on Twitter at Scrubsverse. You can uh, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Cyrub. Every other weekend, we're doing these streams where we're getting together with community folks. So if you want to join, by all means, stop on by and let me know. I just launched my website, scrubsverstheworld.com. Oh, it looks nice. It has all the future events coming up. It's got an episode player. It's pretty cool. Also launched a Facebook page. So if you go search for Scrubs vs. the World podcast on Facebook, you can go leave a review there. That'd be awesome. Come say hi. I want to get more people in. So we got Horde and Alliance. Uh, my Alliance is on Garage. My Horde is on uh, Kill Jaden. Thinking about possibly making a guild somewhere. but uh, Sadness. There's an ocean between us, I'm afraid. I know. I wish there wasn't. Yeah, me too. Me too. But, and... Uh, no, because like uh, I, I'd love to to run with you, Pete, and all that. 
once we get into the alpha, we'll be able to, run, to do stuff together, and that'll be fun. I think I think that's going to be a big game changer. I think you're going to learn to hate me then, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> How could I ever hate you? How could I ever hate your, your beautiful face? Oh, but one thing I got to say, though, thanks to Kara, I saw them retweet a post by Wowhead that there is a new string where we could, we'll be able to eat passengers. And, well, I hate to say it, but it's time for me to eat both of you from the table. Activating customized offer safe transporter. Well, I am back in my home of Iron Forge until we one day reclaim Normagon. Yeah, I'm a gnome. Before we get into the from the community section, something people brought to my attention was a Reddit thread by Orision, where they found a tweet by Russ Peterson, lead reward designer on World of Warcraft. This tweet's talking about the best feedback to give Blizzard in this alpha and beta phase. Russ said, the best feedback is how something makes you feel. This feels mandatory. This doesn't feel meaningful. I was confused by this. The worst feedback is how to fix a problem you don't explain. Let's look at what has been happening in the community. Awesome, let's do that. So signups for the 2020 Arena World Championship are still open. Registration closes on May 11th. Find all the details at the link in the show notes. My friend Des Mephisto has been doing an amazing work on his April events for the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. They have raised over $1,800. Please check out and support my friend doing great work. I've got a link in the show notes to where to find Des Mephisto on Twitter, as well as where to donate for the campaign. There are many events planned for this month, and he also did a 10 to 50 leveling in alpha that took him 12 hours and 16 minutes with no heirlooms. Friendship Dragon's on its way to help people get the uncorrupted Voidwing. Perky Pugs is starting their weekly runs this week on Friday, April 17th. They are raising money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, they have a Discord as well as an FAQ page set up to find all the details. And they are also looking for US carriers, so I have linked to that Google Doc in the show notes. Busty Pants has announced the Herald of the Titans dates have been chosen. The first two dates are Saturday, May 2nd and Friday, May 8th, and these are from 8 to 10 p.m. Central. Get your title and your feet of strength. This is for the North American Realms on Alliance. I've got a link in the show notes on how to get signed up. And in addition to all the data mining, all ahead has quite a few things happening. They have added weapon illustration glow effects to the dressing room. They've added a soulbind calculator to see what the different covenant abilities will do to your spec. They've added a Shadowlands dressing room to see all the customizations for characters and new weapons and armor. And a quick side note, do not complain to me on dark skinned elves. I've seen enough of this on Twitter. I am glad Blizzard is adding representation and customization to the game. So do not complain to me about this. And Wildhead has also added an alpha database with spells items, and achievements. And Talias and Evan got it to talk with Steve Dan user about the Shadowlands. I've got a link to Wildhead where you can see the stream and Wildhead's live blog of it. I love these interviews with the devs and community members, like the one that we mentioned earlier between Ian and Sloot. And Icy Veins talked with Zero, the player who completed all the wild achievements that we reported on in the last episode. Through this, you can get an insight into this monumental achievement at the link in the show notes. He has 1100 days played amongst his characters. That is amazing! And Icy Veins points to concept art by Jonathan Lee on what an assassin would look like in Diablo 4. I'm itching to get my hands on this game, which won't be out until at least 2021 or 2022. And then later on, Pete brought to my attention a Nomergon Crest wallpaper and a fully textured and modeled 3D phone wallpaper. This looks incredible! The Nomergon Crest is definitely something that people have brought up as what I should get for my tattoo for 1 million Frazzle Dazzles. And Pete showed me a 3D printed Varian Wren. In the comments had people like Gala Dion talking about how his in-game model looks a little different. And Tycaro980 said they prefer the 1000 piece puzzle of him that Godan made. So there's this game that's all the rage right now, like Grassy Animals or something. So if you're playing one of the hottest games out there, make sure it's hot by popularity and not your game console overheating. And look at these icons that Cuddle Lion on Reddit made to bring the WoW class icons to shirts in game. And this is for Animal Crossing, if nobody's figured it out. And I found this lovely Night Elf portrait by Nario on Reddit. And then Pete showed me this lovely content art by Arthur Lorenz that includes things like Mechanome class armor, Opira class armor, Guardian armor, a Merlo Quinn mount where you ride in a seat carried by Murlocs, and more. The Worgen Tau retweeted an amazing Valpira commissioned by Ali that I really liked. I've been loving leveling up my Valpira. And then over on Twitter, Lady Emma sent me a tweet with what Star Duke envisions the World of Warcraft anime opening would look like. 
I would so watch this. The animation and the song were so on point. And lastly, in this section, with everything going on, BlizzCon has been a question just for scheduling and budgeting at this point of the year. Well, Blizzard has posted an update basically saying that it's too early to know whether a BlizzCon is feasible this year. They had been working actively to finalize plans before everything that has happened, and they are thinking through a wide range of options. Whatever happens, I want to thank everyone that I met at BlizzCon 2019, and I'm hoping we get to meet again in 2020. But if not, I will still be here and on the streams. This has been another awesome episode of Frazzlecast. Take it away, Frazzle Pants. Thank you, Scruffy. Shout out to Des Mephisto who raided me last weekend and got my first ever 40 concurrent viewers achievement on Twitch. Shout out to Ali who said the episode with Thunk, Trinday and Lady Emma was such a fun episode. Shout out to Kara Soli who said, love your podcast and your sounder on Morley Gray. What sounder? I don't know about a sounder on Morley Gray. And a shout out to Sir Running Knight who made me an amazing chocolate treat poster, as well as a Raz Trudel emote that Raz added to Better Twitch TV and Frankerface C, and which I've also now added to my channel because you can share emotes through Better Twitch TV and Frankerface C, so you can now use Raz Trudel on my Twitch as well. And in addition to thanking those who have given back to me with words of encouragement and different things, I like to take time every week to thank those who have given back to the show financially. Thank you to Harlow who gifted a sub to Tulawin and to Sir Onion Knight. And thank you to my Twitch subs out there. Thank you to Artair, Burkhart, Cap, Crunk, Cuffy of Character Crap Podcast, Sai of Scrubs vs. the World, Dazzledorn, Harlow, Kayla, KR Soli, Leo Wild, Lucas of Cardicate Valley Podcast, Michael the Genome Project, and Two Nerds Maybe More, Morelia, Knight, Norco Killer of the Miscellaneous Podcast, Pete of Storage on Azeroth, Razorus, Rig of Character Crap Podcast, Scissor Lord, Sir Nate the Great, Sir Onion Knight, Spaz Wesson, Kali Yuen, Kellenroyd, Tom of Three Extra Lives, Felicia, Winchester, and Zorst the Goblin. And thank you to Cap and Polly for the bits this week. If you want to support this show financially, please go to support.gnomepodcast.com. And if you have Twitch Prime through Amazon Prime, you can use your free Twitch Prime subscription on my channel. All of your support goes to helping support this labor of love. Thank you very much. Well, I am Frasley, and you can find the show at gnomepodcast.com. There you can catch past episodes and find out many of the places where you can subscribe to this show and get the Gnome Train coming to you every single week. Well, until next week, be awesome. Frazzlecast is a fan podcast that covers Blizzard games. We are not affiliated with Blizzard Entertainment, Inc. Views expressed by the hosts and guests are their own. Some of the art, music, and sound effects come from Blizzard games, and they are owned by Blizzard Entertainment, Inc. No copyright infringement is intended. This show is for the community, and it contains contributions from the community. The Gnome Train intro is by Alley of Dungeon Fables and All Things Azeroth. The opening music is by Brandon T. Blaylock. The Gnome Roar is by Jen of Morley Gray Podcast. And the Frazzle Pants Bumper at the end is by the Scruffy Druid of Loot Optional and Viral Voice Arts. This show is brought to you by Dragon Powered Studio. Podcasts to make your week better. Remember to smile and be awesome. Find more at dragonpoweredstudio.com. <laughs> Full disclosure, I don't know what yeet means. Yeet? Imagine if Frasley had you in the two person rocket and he just kicked you out of it. He's yeeted you out for that. That's yeeted what he's me done. out. My yeah. kids run around saying that all the time. And I'm just like, I don't. Yeet? What is that word? Okay, boomer. <laughs> It's been fun. Farewell!